Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. This is the College Football Gambling Picks Show for week number seven. It is October 8th when we're recording this. I think that's right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Last week, Chris went 5-0-1 against the number. Not Boom. too shabby. I told I, you we were getting healthy, right? I continued my terrible losing ways. It's tough, man. So so tough. Went 4-5. and five. One of those was the uh, the $10 parlay, so I, I lost $86.14. Chris, however, made $289.77 on the season. 21 and 29 for me. I am down 12.56 units. Chris is 18 and 16. He is up 1.05 units. We are above the Mason Dixon line. Back in the positive. Oh. And I've still got several weeks to be able to oh, dig myself it? out of the hole. Yeah. So, not too Let's shabby. Um, if we could do this for a living, Gary, we wouldn't be doing the bullshit jobs that we have for a living. You are 100% correct. I, on I that. would not spend my days on my hands and knees putting hardwood floors down. You got that right. I, All right, I, uh, don't, I don't do that, by the way, very often. <laughs> you, you get other people's Some of that. my guys listen, and they're going to give me crap for that and be like, really? You do this? No, no, I understand. Thank All you right. Uh, the show is Winning Cures Everything. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. Great stuff over there. Of course, you can find all of our pricks. Our, our pricks. Yeah. That's, that's what they've been. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, <laughs> picks, previews. You can find our podcasts, our videos, our social media. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE. You follow me at Chris B. Giannini. Of course, we're on Facebook, Winning Cures, everything there. We are on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching there. Leave a comment. Tell us uh, what you like this week, what you don't like, what you think we got right, what we got wrong, etc. Help us out. Obviously, we're still learning. Yeah. So we could use some help. It's a community thing here, Exactly. Man. I mean, so, we would like this to be a community. I'm not against the fans or the people that yeah. watch, whether they call themselves fans or not. Um, and then... Uh, but tell you us know. your lines. Tell us where you got the lines from. Yeah. You know, we, we'd like to see it. We'd really like to see it. So, of course, on YouTube and if you're listening on the podcast, if you're on Apple Podcasts, go leave a nice review. Uh, leave something funny. You leave a comment or a review, a written review... Five stars, of course. But you leave a written review, and we will read it on the show. Uh, I, I'm not going to read them this week. We'll, we'll, if, we'll start in on the uh, the reaction show be, on Sunday. Be smart and funny, and, and you know. leave it. Hey, if you leave a question, we'll answer it on there. Oh, yeah, that'll be happening. A hundred percent. So, I on might, Apple Podcasts. I might not be able to answer it very well. <laughs> we'll, we'll give some try. kind of an answer. Uh, so, on, on, the, uh, on the website, we do a... Football Pick'em Contest. Football Picks Contest. You go on to the website. It's right there at the very top. You click on it. Every week, 10 games, 7 college, 3 pro. You pick them against the spread. Obviously, we put the opening spread up there. So you're just picking against the opening number, and you go from there. Carol C. and her girls, they, they all came together on this. They went 8-2 and two last week. I like it. Did really, really well. So uh, this week, of course... Gonna be a good time. Um, still, we're gonna we're gonna have more surprises. So those that have won, you know what you won. You got that. It's all good. But uh, but yeah, we we've got more surprises coming this week. It's gonna be a good time. Of course, go enter into the picks contest. Gary teasing with the surprises, man. Hey, you gotta love it, man. Everybody loves free stuff. Uh, and even if you don't like free stuff, you still get to play a game. And that's all that is fun. free as well. Yeah, it's free. All you do is go in, enter your email address, enter your name, pick your you know picks, and then go from there. It's a good time. You uh, you ready to get into some college football? Yes, I, I, I'm very hesitant to say yes. I did great last week. I, I'm walking super carefully this week. I liked two games down the lineup. As you need I picked four. four. Yeah. Made myself pick four. We got to pick four at least. I liked two. I didn't love two. Like to, so. okay. That's I've got uh, I've got seven this week, and I have a feeling that at least one of these is very public, and that'll be that fine. always that always scares me. But yeah, now you and I just went through the and last I, six weeks of football. Just and, because and, something is public, obviously, doesn't mean and every spread in the book 
for based college on football. Vegas Insider's information, you're right. Yeah. And you would be doing really well if you bet all those games. Now, I never like a system that requires you to, to bet, bet every game. 30 game. Like, if you got to bet 30 games to be seven games over 500, screw that. Because now you need a bankroll of just a gigantic amount. That's a yeah. risk. I, I do this for fun. This is recreation. I'm not, I'm not doing that crap. Yeah. I just, I'm just not. That makes anyway, sense. It, it didn't work out the way I thought it would. No, it's a, the the house was actually thirty six and forty one on spreads yeah. that were eighty percent or more. Jeff Miles tried to tell us that those numbers don't matter. No, he he was one hundred percent right, and and I guess I had to see it to believe it. Yeah, and and he was he was dead on. Yes, we sir. believe it now. All right, uh, I'm going to start us off. I've got seven. You've got I've got four. So got yeah, four. you definitely need to start, and we'll wrap it up. All right, that sounds good. I will start first off. We're going to Akron, Ohio. Why, I'm rolling the train, we? man. I, why wouldn't I'm we? Going against Akron again, Kent State minus 13 and a half at Akron. Uh, look. Road dog of two touchdowns. Yeah. A road favorite Kent, two touchdowns. Kent has played the way tougher schedule. Uh, they've got a better turnover margin against that tougher schedule. They've got better passing efficiency. Kent, look, Kent State had 750 yards of offense in 84 plays against Bowling Green, which was funny. 375 passing, 375 rushing. Pretty nuts. Uh, that's a team that's very comparable to Akron. Akron actually statistically is worse than Bowling Green. Uh, Akron, only 71 rushing yards against UMass. They did have 335 passing, but they yeah. they got beat by UMass. Uh, Kent State, I think, absolutely hammers them here. Uh, that, that head coach off the Dino Babers tree, when he finds a team that he can run up the score on, that he can actually run his offense, that's what he's going to do. Uh, I think he does it here. I think they won by three touchdowns. I've got Kent State minus 13.5 for $75. So, game that I like. Okay. I'm going to give the one I like out first. I'm going to go down to Miami. And I think that this year one team of Miami is struggling to find their identity. Okay. I think they're struggling to consistently put up points throughout the game. Uh, which, which causes them to, you know, get behind early. I think Virginia's the second best team in the ACC, but I actually think, and, and I, I've crapped on the ACC a lot, but I think Virginia's a good football team. Yeah, we've seen them get beat up by Notre Dame at Notre Dame, and I think Notre Dame's one of the best teams in the country. And I don't know that that's that's a black mark on anybody's resume. I really like Bronco Mendenhall. We've talked about that. Our love yep. for him is, is not hidden whatsoever. They are plus one and a half. I was shocked that they were catching points. I was shocked that I was I was expecting Virginia minus three, especially coming off of the loss from Virginia Tech. And I I see this number is basically four and a half, five points different than what I think the line should be. I'm going to ride with Virginia and the Cavaliers. All right, so Virginia plus two. I keep betting these ACC games knowing I'm not going to get to watch them. <laughs> because the damn ACC network isn't on TV anywhere except for where these games are already being played. And in some cases, they're actually not. Like, they're actually not on there either. Not even on ACC schools. That's ridiculous. That's, I mean, That's just you gotta insane. Have, you got to have YouTube TV, basically, to, oh, to get that. Oh, God. Uh, I'm moving over to Arizona State. Okay. Yeah. I'm going down to the desert. Washington State is coming in. Arizona State is a one-point underdog. Look, Washington State, number 112 in opposing yards per play. Arizona State, number 27 in opposing yards per play. Washington State, they lost their defensive coordinator, uh, Tracy Clays, in the uh, in the bye week. Arizona State freshman quarterback, Jaden Daniels, he is going to be able to move the football on this defense easily. I think this Arizona State defense will be able to slow down Washington State. I like Arizona State plus the one here. Uh, 50 bucks at minus 110. Oh, I didn't even give a number of mine. Go ahead. Finish That's yours it. and I'll. Yeah, so I, I did 50 bucks here at minus 110. Um, yeah, I feel I feel good about this. I, I really like this Arizona State team. I think they got a great defense. I think the offense is good enough. Um, and Washington State against a good defense is, you know, tends to uh, get slowed down. I'm so, going to do my Virginia pick minus 110, $75. $75 at minus yep. 110. Now, let me tell you, I think that's scary just because I don't know that Mike Leach is going to lose three games in a row. 
That is a strict, there's no stats behind it. There's no analysts behind it. That is a really well coached team. Oh yeah. That blasted the hell out of his team the week before the bye week. Man, I think that team's gonna come out with their butthole on fire. They they might. They that, might. That is yeah. I am I, I am a strict stay away. Um ah, that's not true. Is that a Pac twelve after dark game? Yeah. I'll probably bet on Mike Leach. Just just to have money on it, but that's not one of my picks. Um yeah. the other team that I like a lot, the Third best team, in my opinion, in the ACC. Another game that I'm not going to get to watch. Wake Forest at home against Louisville. We have a rule. We bet against bad teams, right? True. I don't think Louisville's a good team. Now, they went tit for tat, touchdown for touchdown, field goal for field goal with Boston College. They were favored who, to beat Boston College. Who, who actually has a pretty terrible defense. Yes. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty terrible. I, I think Wake Forest will score on every drive of this defense against Louisville. They got to win by seven. Basically, they get the ball last. They're going to win by seven because we're not kicking field goals for Wake Forest. This offense is really good. But this defense has shut some teams down. They've held some teams yeah. pretty low. I think okay, Wake Forest might be the second best team. Now, I know they're undefeated. They haven't played. Uh, a, they didn't play Notre Dame. Yeah, it, so, it's scheduled. That's it. But this is a really well-coached team, um, and and I I think Louisville just has some growing to do. I'm very shocked that week in and week out, Louisville is getting some pretty big bumps in the point spread, and I don't know where that's coming from, but every week when I look at the lines, I have an idea of what I think the line should be, and Louisville's line is always three to four points different. A lot of that has to do with the, like yards per play, et cetera. Look, Louisville has looked a lot better this Oh, season. no, their offense looks really good, but yeah. they can't score anybody, and their offense only looks good against really bad defenses. Not bad defenses, not okay defenses, really bad defenses. I also think that because of how well they played against Notre Dame early in the season, I think that has something to do but with that. But that was, man, that was that, that's the only Yeah, but that's the only national game that anybody's watched on. Yeah, but that's, so. that's once again, it's week one. I'm, I'm laying six and a half, taking Wake Forest, Minus, let me make sure the juice is right. I want to give right numbers. Minus 110, give me 75 on that. 75 of minus 110. All right, next up for me, Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan is a one-point underdog at home against Ball State. Now, these two teams are incredibly equal uh, when you adjust for strength of schedule everything else because Eastern Michigan has, has played some you know, they, they beat Illinois on the road. They lost at Kentucky, et cetera, right? Uh, Eastern Michigan is at home. They have won and covered three straight against Ball State. They won 42-20 to last year, 56-14 to two years ago, and 48-41 to against Ball State three years ago. Uh, I think that continues. I think Eastern Michigan wins the game straight up. Uh, I've yeah, got. They, they just have to win by one. They've beaten the hell out of them three years in a row. Exactly. So it, at plus one, I'm getting plus 105 odds, which it, that's, that's minus 110. That's where I've got. But I'm if you this is one book that I look oh, at. Oh, okay, okay. And that, that one's actually got it at Eastern Michigan minus one. Yeah. Hmm. You're seeing it at Eastern Michigan plus one. Yeah, I got it at plus one. Let me go to a a different. A different thing. Yeah, let me go to a different thing. Let's see. Uh, oh, we're on week. One. You're on week one there. <laughs> let's let's it's confirm bad this. Radio. Let's let's confirm this because I I did these numbers several hours ago. I can't believe it would move a whole. That would. I mean, basically that's two points. Yeah. Now you're right. So you currently we've got basically a pick 'em. Okay. And I would give I would give you I would. I would right, give so you a pick them at 110 if you want to do that. All right, let's let's do that. Do a pick them at minus 110. I'm not going to make you take the minus one just because that one's one. Book. All right, so minus 110. All right, that sounds good because I had them at plus 105. All right. But, uh, but minus 110 is fine for a pick them. Um, so, yeah, Eastern Michigan, pick them over Ball State. Who are you rolling with next? Um, I think we're going to – let's go with – so now we're into the games that I had to pick at least two more, and I'm, and I'm, I'm scrapping for, for games – I'm going to go with the game I think we have together. You can speak a little bit more to this if you want to. Notre Dame got USC coming into town. Yeah. Once again, I think Notre Dame is one of the best teams in the country. USC's coming off a bye week, so they're able to work a little more in with the 
health players that they've got. Um, and and so, man, I just think this Notre Dame defense is legit. I think that Notre Dame offensive line is now just an offensive line factory for the NFL. Yeah. And, and it, they're nasty. They beat people up. When you can hang with a defense like – with an – yeah, defensive front like Georgia, and your defense can hang with an offensive line like Georgia. That that puts you in a class, and that's not an SEC thing because not us, all SEC schools can even do that. But Notre Dame did it, and and I think that's not a fluke. I don't think that's them up for a big game, but this is going to be a big game, and and I think this is a situation where they're going to kind of beat up on you uh, uh, USC. I got 11 is the number, minus 110 is the juice. Give me $75 on Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish. Well, USC won a nine against the spread in their last 10 road games. USC's offense is all passing. Notre Dame is number 17 in pass defense, number 16 in yards per attempt defense. Right. USC, number 78 passing defense. Notre Dame is number 14 in yards per pass attempt offense. Notre Dame is super efficient. I'm rolling Notre Dame as well. Uh, You said minus 11 is the latest. Minus 11 is what I I saw. I had them at minus 11 and a half. I'll take the minus 11. I've got $100 at minus 110. Ooh, going big, big. On that one. I I feel really, Yeah, I do too. I I like them a lot. Yeah. So it opened at 10, and I've got current minus 11. Um, and I've seen that at multiple places. Okay. So if you can get, hopefully it won't move too much on everybody else. It's definitely a public play, but tonight has cured me of being afraid of that. You got that right. All right, next one up for me. Uh, I am actually going to, I'm going to do a weeknight game. Thursday night. We like these. Louisiana Monroe is going to, where is it, San Marcos, where Texas State is? I think that's right. I couldn't tell you what city that. It did. <laughs> I should know, I should know that Texas State's a good football team. That they're yeah they're they're pretty good pretty good now. Um, they have not been for the past few years, but Spavital that whole bunch. Yeah, the, the coach that they've brought in has has done well. Texas State is a three and a half point underdog in this game. The metrics have got Texas State as a favorite by about a point, and Louisiana Monroe gives up a ton of yards, a ton of points. Texas State had a bye week. Louisiana Monroe played Memphis at home last week. Now they travel on a short week. Now, granted, it's not a super long trip. But even still, you're not playing at home. You've got one less day of practice. The other team has had a week and a half to prep for you. Correct. Texas State does not take any game for granted. Because they got to get wins wherever they can get wins. I like Texas State here plus the three and a half. I'm getting more than a field goal. Give me fifty bucks on the Bobcats at minus one ten. Who uh who you rolling with next, buddy? My last pick, I'm going to the Smurf Turf. Oh boy. I'm taking Hawaii plus twelve. I I like them catching this many points. Boise has looked really good. I think Boise is one of the better group of five teams in the country. But laying twelve points to this Hawaii team is just something I'm not willing to do for another group of five team. They had the week off, so I don't think the travel is really going to kill them. And, um, I mean, Nick Nick Rolovich, that's how you pronounce his name, right? Yeah, Nick Rolovich. I was looking it up just to make sure I didn't sound like He's so much fun, man. I've grown to just love this guy's (laughs) getting in the tank, and and, and I like the way he plays. He's got balls. He's not hitting me. He coaches fearlessly. Yeah. I like the coaches that are not afraid to just attack, 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 attack. It's the reason one of the best coaches in the country, I acknowledge, Kirby Smart, I just hate watching him coach a football game. He's got so much talent there. If he had any aggression whatsoever, I don't know that anybody would have stopped Georgia the last two, three years. This guy, he's got aggression. He is yeah, he does. fearless. He's going to go to that Smurf turf. This might be an underdog play that I make a little money line on because I don't know. If Boise State's going to get got, it's going to be here. It's the only place on the schedule that I think I think they really can. My Hawaii, two weeks in a row to get ready for this game. I'm definitely taking the 12 points, minus 110, um, and and give me $75 on it. 75 minus 110, Hawaii plus 12. All right, and I've got two more. And so you're uh, you're done, right? I'm done. Those are my four. 
I'm walking away. Next one for me, I'm going to college game day. I'm going to Baton Rouge. Look, I understand. If this line had come out single digits, I was rolling on the Tigers. I, I would have felt really good about that. And then it came out 13. And it moved up to 13 and a half, and then it moved back down. Uh, we're going to have more on this game, more stats, etc., cetera, on the, uh, on the preview show. So go check that one out as well. But, look, LSU, 0-5 against the spread the last five years against Dan Mullen. Florida, number five in the country in sacks. LSU, number 52 in sacks given up. Look, LSU has not played a good defense yet. Number 60, Georgia Southern, which... Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll see. Number 104 in total defense, Texas. Then they played Northwestern State. Then they played number 125 in total defense, Vanderbilt, and number 95, Utah State. On the other side, Florida hasn't exactly played a really good offense yet. As far as total offense, Miami is number 39, but we, we know what that is. That is horse crap number right there. That's, that is, that's dealing with the yards. Yeah. So Because, I mean, even last week they had four turnovers, but... They still put up a ton of yards. A ton of yards. After that, they played UT Martin, and they played Towson a couple of weeks ago, yep. but number 87 total offense, Kentucky, number 106, Tennessee, number 64, Auburn. Florida is number 10 in total defense. LSU is number two in total offense. I think this is too many points. I could see this being a 34-24 kind of game, a 42-31 kind of game, somewhere around there. Uh I'm going to take Florida plus the 13. Dan Mullen against Ed O. Like, I, I think it, he's going to have something ready for this game. And I think it's just too many points. I think LSU wins the game. But 13 points seems like it's too many for me. Uh, so I'm putting 50 bucks on that at minus 110 on Florida plus 13. And then my last game, Mississippi State. Good gracious. Goes to Knoxville. And I like the Bulldogs here. Minus six and a half in Knoxville. Look, Gay and Autry both are going to end up playing four state this week. I, th I think we figured out what they're doing, right? So they've got these, these defensive players that are, um, that are suspended for eight games this year. What would you do if the line moved to seven? Because basically... I'd still take the seven. Okay, everybody. It, doesn't, it just makes it a push game instead of a win game. But yeah, it didn't cost you a game. I, I don't think it's going to matter. Okay. Um, I think because people, it's it's predominantly seven everywhere you got it. So. People are overvaluing Tennessee the way Tennessee and, started against Georgia. Yes, and their their fight. What uh what is their number? One fifty seven. Yeah, one fifty seven is the. Da, 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 let's see. Oh, there's still a bunch of uh, minus six and a halfs on the board. Okay. So so I'm taking minus six I and a half. On two that. places saw. That's fine. Yeah. See, it. there's there's still. A board. I just wanted to because the majority of the public is going to take state as well. Well, you would think that. Um, I think I think that's true, but that's that's not how it has really gone so far. Like okay. that, all of the money line bets basically are coming in on Tennessee. Well, yeah, because the money line doesn't pay anything on Mississippi State, and Mississippi State's not a public team. Right. Um, so far on this, uh, let's see, on Sportsbook Review, but the ticket. And so this one, we've got sixty-five percent of the spread bets are on state. Okay, that's fine, and that's fine. Um, I think they're overvaluing Tennessee. I don't think people have caught up to the fact that State's best defensive players are being held out of a lot of games. Like against Auburn, against LSU, stuff like that. They're going to be held they're they're going to be out of those games. They're going to be out of the easy games. The toss-ups, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Ole Miss, those guys are going to be back in. So Gay and Autry are going to be playing for Mississippi State this weekend. Look, I still think Tennessee's trash. I completely agree. I don't care that this game is in Knoxville. Uh, they didn't show me anything last week. Now that you've got game footage on this quarterback, Marr, um, I think State's going to be able to handle these guys. And and I think they win two touchdowns. So I've got $100 Ooh. at minus 110 Ooh. on Mississippi State, minus 6.5. And, and that is going to be our picks for the week. Now... Right now, we're going to get our buddy in here, T.J. Reeves from Tampa, Florida. Whew, good gracious. From the Three Dog Thursday podcast. All right, right now, we're going to bring in our buddy T.J. Reeves from down in Tampa. 
from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, you, from what I understand, are leaving. Uh, what is it, Tropicana Park? Tropicana Field, the Tropicana dome where the Rays play, right in St. Petersburg. Uh, I have I've I've gotten plenty out of domes because I was in the Superdome with the Buccaneers Sunday, <laughs> and now I have been to baseball at the time that we are taping this very show that uh, game one and game two of the, or actually game three and game four of the American League Divisional Series has been played. So I'm about domed out, but I'm ready to talk some dogs and some college football with you guys here while we wait out the hours-long traffic to get out of the, <laughs> out of the baseball game tonight, boys. Well, I mean, your, uh, your boys actually got to Verlander tonight. Things were good, of course. Uh, that, that was a dog that covered, so that's definitely there you good. Go. Um, and the, last Ray, week, the Rays down 0-2 have been quite the dog in these two games, so you love that. You got that right. You got that right. And you and Chris actually hit on some dogs last week. So You I, are correct. But Brother Giannini with the Boston College Eagles, very nice, uh, coming through there at Louisville. And you also had the push. We'll, we'll count the push for West Virginia. You and I uh, had West Virginia – uh, and Texas, actually, I think you, what you had no. Purdue and I had, I had West Virginia, yeah, right? So we had, had push, Purdue. push. Yes, sir. You had Purdue for the push. I had West Virginia with Texas for the late push and even got the Florida Gators at home with Auburn. I know we talked a lot about them last week, and I have a feeling the Gators might come up in our conversation here on this show. Absolutely. You know what? I, look, at this point in the podcast, I've already bet them. I bet Florida plus 13. Dan Mullen, 5-0 and oh against LSU the last five years at Mississippi State and at Florida uh, I think he's got Coach O's number. I don't know that they win the game, but 13 points seems like a lot of points against the number 10 defense in the country, the number five defense as far as sack rate goes. Right. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm all over Florida here just because I think the number is too big. Uh, look, LSU has not played a defense uh, ranked higher than 60th, and that was only Georgia Southern. The other three teams that, that are actual legit teams, FBS teams, None were ranked higher than number 95 in total defense. So I, I think that this will be a little bit of a wake-up call for LSU. Also a big wake-up call for Florida as well. But, uh, but yeah, I, I tend to lean defense in, in matchups like these. Well, and, again, we'll talk a lot about this on Three Dog Thursday uh, probably. Uh, in fact, Peter Burns is due to join me from the SEC Network. I know you guys have talked to Peter before. Oh, yeah. And he's an LSU guy, and he is going to the game, the host of SEC this morning on Sirius XM and the SEC Network. Uh, he is, uh, he's going to the game while his wife is 37 weeks pregnant with their son, by the way. Attaboy. So he's getting the get-out-of-jail-free card. That's him. So <laughs> Peter that's and I will be talking about this game. The only thing that concerns me, your, your stats do align, is Tiger Stadium is bonkers at night. And, Chris, I know you're an LSU guy, too. And I, I don't know that Florida offensively is going to be ready to go. I, I think that I, I think that LSU's defense is the great equalizer. So let's just let's just see. But that is a lot of points. I agree with you. We'll debate it a lot on Three Dog Thursday. All right. So of course we got uh, some other big prime matchups between uh, blue bloods. Really, uh, I'm kind of curious. You know, maybe if you've got a leaning one way or another, let's start out in the Red River Shootout with Texas. No, you. Down in Dallas, you, you got any feelings on this? One? I I look at those Longhorns and they uh, they really were winning the game decisively, and I had given up on West Virginia, and they ended up getting the late push uh, last week. But uh, Ellinger was outstanding on the road, and Tom Herman has obviously got them rolling. And you look at the recent games in this series, Texas has had success head to head. And I know uh, Oklahoma looks right now at times invincible on offense with Jalen Hurts. Some of that though is level of competition. Because you're playing Texas Tech at home, you're playing at Kansas. Uh, this game will be jacked. I've had the privilege of having been there before on a previous occasion, and it is some scene at the Cotton Bowl uh, to watch this game with half of the stadium burnt orange and half of the stadium crimson and white. So and then you we'll got take the state a strong fair. look. You got the you fair got the going on outside. You got you got a hundred thousand plus people that are there, not for the football game, that are walking around eating their corny dogs and their funnel cakes and getting on the Ferris wheel. So it, it is some scene, and we'll talk a lot about this game, I'm sure, on Three Dog Thursday. I'm tempted. I'm tempted on those Longhorns with, uh, what is that, 11, Chris, that they're currently getting? That's, yeah, that's you, attractive. Yeah, you can get 11. Now, let me remind you, the, the level of play that Oklahoma's played has not been good. 
Texas defense is in the plus hundreds uh, defensively. Yeah. So that, yeah. it's not like they're going to get challenged defensively. So. Well, well, and keep in mind, too, that as much as we can talk about Mojo and what you did, I mean, LSU and Burrow riddled them at home. And even in a couple of their other games, they have given up yardage like you're talking about in points on defense. And you know that Lincoln Riley would love nothing more than to put, as Barry Switzer would always call it, half a hundred. That's he wants right. to put half a hundred <laughs> on somebody, and Lincoln Riley may try to do that on the horns. Yeah, you may be right about that. Now, the other one that I'm, that I'm looking at, it's a big spread, but it doesn't get any more traditional than USC and Notre Dame. Now, the line is, yes, yes, sir. The line is 11. It seems like it might be a lot of play. I mean, USC has played pretty well this year so far. You know, they, they had the hiccup at Washington. They had the hiccup at BYU. This is another road game. Clay Helton hadn't, hadn't been good against the spread, you know, as a road dog. It, is it something maybe we look at? Well, and two weeks ago, they were beaten decisively in Seattle by Washington. But before that, they were in the game at BYU, and that was with the quarterback Slovis playing the true freshman, and he got hurt in that game. They've now had a bye week. And Notre Dame was good a couple of weeks ago against Georgia, but, uh, you know, they, they played New Mexico State. They played Bowling Green, who had a losing record last week. Uh, I can tell you this. The guys in the uh, in the red and the gold are a whole lot better than Bowling Green and New Mexico State rolling into South Bend. Absolutely, I, I will take I will take a strong look at uh, Fight On SC uh, here in this game just because of the rivalry and in particular we don't know midweek, but if Slovis can play, he's a composed kid uh, at quarterback. Let's let's see what that looks like if Slovis is in there. I like those eleven points. That's attractive as well. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so make sure everybody go check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He's going to have quite a bit of gambling stuff for college football on there as well as NFL. I will be joining as well as, you said Peter Burns is joining as well from the SEC Network. That's correct. Uh, it's going to be a good time, man. TJ, thank you so much for joining for the uh, the college football podcast. Always good to be with you winning cures, guys. Again, we came up with one underdog after another. Chris was a big contributor to that. I always appreciate it. Love being with you. Absolutely. Thank you, buddy. All right, we appreciate TJ being in here with us today. Of course, go check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast. It is on all your favorite podcast uh, networks, podcast distributors, applications, whatever it is, whatever way you listen to it. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at BuckSidelineGuy. That's going to wrap it up for us. Here's hoping we get a uh, another good week. Of course, together last week we went 9-5-1. and one. The five losses were all mine. All mine. But hopefully this week that won't be the I case. want you to do well. I, I really like the fact that you're struggling and you took Florida. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I mean, that helps. That makes me feel better internally, even though I want you to get off the schneid. Oh, yeah. We're, we're in a competition, but I never see it as a competition. I no, want we us, just want to win. I want us to both do well. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you 100%. The goal is 52.36% by the end of the season. Uh, I the Florida game, there? you lose like a dog. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. At, at least I only got rest. 50 bucks on that one. I win hope win I, all the rest. I hope I hit the big ones. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up. College football gambling pick show for week number seven. Of course, go over to winningcureseverything.com. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you think we got right, what we got wrong, etc. Go over to tunicatravel.com and find out what our friends in the Delta have got going on for you. They got six incredible sports books. Again, tunicatravel.com is the website to go do a little research before you head down there. Chris, this has been fun, buddy. We, uh, we'll see you guys again later. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.